Hello, my name is Philip Campo. I'm an assistant department head for education here in Carnegie Mellon's computational biology department. We're here in uh, Carnegie Mellon's world leading school of computer science. Uh, and I wanted to give you a talk today because a lot of people that I talk to don't know a whole lot about computational biology. The first question is, what even is computational biology? Um, and I think that the best way of answering that question, beyond to say that it's the application of computational methods to biological questions, is to give you an example of a problem that's solved using computational biology in labs around the world every single day. So that problem is the issue of genome sequencing or figuring out what it is your genome is. It may be something that you've heard about, um, but that you don't know a lot of details about. Um, and I thought that I would use this talk to explain some of those details and where computers fit into this. So assembling a genome winds up being essentially one of the largest puzzles that humans have ever put together. Um, so we think of it as a puzzle with a billion pieces, which explains kind of the, the title of my talk. Um, and I wanted to start then with a couple of just kind of warm-up brain teasers, one being that there is a jigsaw puzzle um, that was produced in 2007 that we think of as the highest stakes jigsaw puzzle in history. And I say high stakes because this puzzle came with a $2 million cash prize. If anybody could solve it before the end of 2010, that person would get $2 million. So you might think, well, what would make this so hard? Maybe there's a million pieces in the puzzle. And the key point is that this jigsaw puzzle only had 256 pieces. So what in the world could make a jigsaw puzzle with just 256 pieces so difficult to solve? Wouldn't somebody just solve it straight away? And after three years, no one had actually claimed the prize. So somehow this, prop, this puzzle that has just 256 pieces is so difficult that no one could claim a $2 million cash prize for solving it. So that's brain teaser number one. The other thing I want to just kind of be on your mind is to give you a, a silly little analogy, which is I'll say we stack every copy of today's newspaper, or in this cartoon I've said every copy of the New York Times from June 27, 2000. And we put them all in a stack and then we put that on a pile of dynamite. And hypothetically speaking, let's just see what happens when we light the fuse, we get this huge explosion. And we're left with just a lot of little pieces of confetti, essentially. And our goal is to say we're not allowed to use the internet. Um, how is it that we can possibly reconstruct what it was that the news was? So what did the New York Times say on that day in history? Okay, so those are the two problems that I kind of want to have on, on your mind as we go through this. Um, and we'll come back and see what in the world those two things have to do with computational biology soon.